Our Heavenly Father has provided all of us more than we need. And the question is, why would, why would God, the Father, give all, all these kids more than that we personally need? And we know that the answer is found in this Bible verse that and God is able to bless you abundantly at all, at all, uh, all in, that in all things. At all times, having that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. So God is uh, teaching us that whatever bless blessing that we will receive, we will not raise our our standard of living, but to raise our standard of giving. God both uh, the ability and opportunity to give and become more like Him, because we are is created as His image and likeness. Amen. So, come here and God is able to bless you abundantly. 
that is able to make all grace about toward us. As we give, we must be persuaded or motivated that God is able to reward our giving. God is able to bless us abundantly as the scripture says in Luke 6.38 Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured out into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen. So God is able to make the sowing seed abound to a great harvest. God is able to bless our giving. That's what the scripture says. Again, in uh, in uh, Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six, it says the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Amen? We must always remember that God will always reward our giving to others as he has commanded us. It says here in this uh, uh, translation that God is able not Will because we have a first, uh, we first have a responsibility at least to fulfill our obligation. Then God will reward us. Giving is not just only one times, one time. It is continu uh, continually, and we will not uh, turn of giving, giving back to God, even we still not receive what we ask or what we what we pray. It might be God is testing our faith and endurance to serve and worship Him. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Let us not get tired of doing what is good. For the right time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amen? So we must remember, we never give up and we will rise up. And God is always telling us, For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So if we give, God has a plan for us. Next is, so that in all things, at all times, having that all you need. So we have all that we need and content what we have. We do, not, uh, we do not need to be afraid or lose what we have given. Why? Because the God is saying, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. So we should not be bold giving because we are not uh, because we are worried that we will have enough to provide in our needs, in our future. That's what we must remember. God is always teaching us. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, we we'll bring it worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Do not worry because God will provide our needs. He's our source, our provider, giver, as the Lord always reminding us. That seek my kingdom and my righteousness. And all the things for tomorrow will be added unto you. Amen. And lastly is, we will abound in every good work. We will receive a large of number in good things, both spiritually, spiritual and earthly nature. So what you receive will allow you, allow you to make up and what you have given away and you will be able to give again. Amen. So what we give, it will come back to us and God is always giving us and God always reminding us that we again give. In the wording in our giving, God's God does in all grace. In all grace, our giving is rewarded in many different ways. It might be materially, spiritually. God will bless our giving by promotions with better pay, uh, with, with better pay, and unexpected uh, gifts of money or making things last so we don't suffer the cost of blessing them. So spiritually. God may bless our giving by freeing our hearts from the bondage of greediness and materialism. Amen? By giving us the sense of blessing and happiness, by storing up 
rich reward in heaven. So there is no need with the, with the ways we can bless when God is able to make progress about us. So we must believe and convince that the spirit and action of giving is the most important spiritual practice a disciple of Jesus can claim. Amen. So if we are a disciple of Christ, we must not be bold. Because God is always teaching us. We must give. Because even his life, he gave to us. And how we feel about tithing and sharing our finances that also reflect the level of our giving in, others, in other areas in our lives. Generosity and contagious and spread from our money to our time, our talent and abilities and our presence, our lack of generosity and the talents and the willingness to share is also contagious. So uh, God is always telling us that we, we must give because God is always told to share what has been given to us with those who are blessed. So we, we must uh, share whatever we have, our talents, our time, our gift, our time, even ourselves, and yes, even our financial resources. God is able to do far more abundantly beyond what we ask or think because He is omnipotent. From, from Genesis to Revelation, we see God's mighty power at work. We can summarize in, uh, it under four headings. Remember to say, God is able. So whenever you are doubt or discouraged, God is always providing. Amen? Let us give thanks to the Lord. And uh, can we stand and uh, offer singing to our Lord? Yep. <laughs> 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 so, uh, brethren, uh, bear with me. Let's sing. Let's sing. Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. It is good to remind it of God's ability to change our lives. Through the Holy Spirit within us, we are able to overcome temptation. God has the power to restore what the enemy has killed, stolen, and destroyed in our lives. He even promised to restore our wasted years through our acknowledging that He is King, Lord, and Savior. Amen. He gives us peace and assurance that is beyond understanding. And therefore, we are confident that the power of God's Spirit within us will begin a good work in completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ.
praising in him when we say him more. Because once we are in heaven, we will be praising him, praising and singing him more songs of worship. Let us sing for him. I can't wait for me to Enjoy the song they're already singing. Glory, 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 glory. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face, I cry out. Because your holy, holy, holy.
how should I say it? It's not just you're going to pursue your career inside the church, but if you are going to teach the word of God, if you're going to lead in, in, in Bible study, if you're going to lead in, in some activities in church, if you're going to lead in, in some exhortations, mind you, brothers and sisters, and let me tell you that you will be judged strictly. Simply because we are the one teaching and releasing the word of God. Whether we like it or not, whether we are aware of it or not, we are the representative of God. My word in this pulpit, if it comes to me, is useless. My opinion as well is useless also. It means nothing. What's important when we are delivering the word of God is the word of God itself. Amen? Our opinion, our uh, jokes sometimes, our advices to others, if it's not aligned with the word of God, it is useless. Amen? Now, we will be judged with greater strictness. Mind you that if we are releasing the word of God, people are looking at us. Whether we tell them that do not look on us, but look only to God, it is difficult for us to differentiate or, or to stay focused on looking at God alone. Why? Because the people or the person who is releasing the word himself is being used by God. Now, if I am releasing the word of the Lord here and I'm teaching you how to forgive, and me, myself, don't know how to forgive them, it will be useless. My release of the word of God will be useless. But the word of God still stands. You get my point? Whether I am willing to forgive someone or not, if God teaches us to forgive, and, I, and if I release and teach you how to forgive, then forgive. But we who teach and release the word of God might cause or might be the, the instrument why people inside the church are sinning as well. Because since they are looking at us who is standing in the pulpit, who is releasing the word of God, and we are not living according to the word of God and according to the word that we have released in the pulpit, then those people who have received the word of God will think that, look at that man. He himself don't know what he is saying. He himself, look at that pastor, look at that brother. He himself don't follow or obey the word that he is releasing. Amen. Mind you, brothers and sisters, and let me repeat it again, that I am also a human being. I am not yet perfect. <laughs> See, me, uh, even I have a lot of flaws in life. Amen. So I just want to remind you that those people who are standing here releasing the word of God, exhortation, exhortate, uh, exhort, exhorting the word of God is not yet perfect. And we cannot be perfect not unless we leave this word. Amen. Now, those or for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Why? Because we are entrusted by the word of God. Mind you, it is God who entrusts you with his word. So in, in delivering the word of God, it should not be mixed by your own personal opinion. As what the book of Luke says, but the one who did not know and did what deserves of meeting will receive a light meeting. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. So if you are given a task, if you are given the opportunity to release the word of God, it has a bigger responsibility than preparing an envelope for giving. I'm not saying that my vocation is much 
better than yours or yours is less than mine. What I am saying is that when we release the word of God, you should have a sense of responsibility on it. It's not that you want to release the word of God for others to know that you are knowledgeable in the word of God. Mind you that the word of God should, uh, uh, should not be just shared to others, but we should live by it, especially us, those people around us who, is, who do not know Christ that well and who do not attend churches, but we are attending Bible study three times a week. We are in the church every week. We are in the gathering as much as we want to. We're taking up classes to, to equip us. So our life or our standard of living should be different from others. Amen. Do not expect people who don't know God or those people, do not expect the word to be on our side. If you go outside now and you see things that there are, there are, if, if, if we go outside now, it's, don't expect things or don't expect people who don't know Christ to act like Christ. Well, if someone steal your uh, scooter, if someone steals your scooter, uh, don't get angry, especially if someone who's, who stole it doesn't know God. Because you cannot expect them to act like Christ. Be angry if I steal it. Be angry if Jojo steal it. Why? Because we know who Christ is. And we are trying to live by his word. Amen. But if someone lied to you, if someone uh um if someone lied to you, huh? if someone take advantage of your goodness, especially, mind you, if that man or that person don't know Christ, then don't be surprised. If the atheists hate us, don't be surprised. Why? Because they don't have God in their life. Be surprised if I steal something from you. Be surprised if I lie to you. Why? Because I am projecting and I am a representative of God whenever I stand on the pulpit, whenever I am walking. I try to live as much as possible with the help of the Holy Spirit by His grace alone, not by my own strength to live according to His word. But if I fail, I must admit that I fail or we fail. Then let's go back running towards God. Amen. Mind you that I will be judged strictly. And when I die in which heaven, when I leave this world, I will be judged strictly also in heaven. How did you handle the word that I told you to tell them? Did you release it? the way I want you to release it? Did you release it to please the people around you? Did you please, did you release it to please yourself? Or do you release it as if I am in the audience itself? That's why it is very, well, it's not difficult, but we should be very careful so and above in releasing the word of God because we might represent him in a wrong way. Amen? You are all ambassadors of Christ. If those people who don't know what heaven means or how to live in heaven, if they look at our lives, they should know that this is the way how Christ lived. And this is the way how should I live. Amen? Now, what else? First Corinthians 4, verse 6. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos, Paul speaking, for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. 
Kung ano nakasulat, doon lang tayo. We do not add, we do not deduct, we do not multiply nor divide the word of God. And if we're going to divide it, make sure that we are dividing it correctly. Amen. We do not twist the word of God so that it will fit on our situation. We do not twist the word of God so that we can please others. We do not twist the word of God so that it will it will uh, be be and pleasing to others' ears to hear. Whatever is written, is written. We should release it. If the word says that if we're not going to, to accept our Lord Jesus Christ, we will go to hell, then, then, they're, then they're going to hell. With, with conviction, with love, with the aim of conversion. It's not that you're going to raise it. Ah, you're going to hell. Ha. I am not. Well, maybe it's true that we are all going to hell. Well, obviously, it is true that we're all going to hell if we're not going to, to accept and to put our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But you should release it with love as well. As a representative of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and He Himself is love. When we speak, we speak with conviction. Amen. We speak with love. We should not be proud of the things that we knew about God. We should share it and we should not be selfish about it. Amen. If you knew that that person will go to hell simply because he knew he's not putting she or he is not putting his faith on Christ, then try to reach him or her. Evangelism one of one. Share the love of God. Share your encounter with him. Amen. But what is written, we must not go beyond what is written. Amen. Now, 2 Peter 2, verse 1 to 3 says, But Paul's prophets also arose among the people. Pakapula ang propeta. Ano po? Just as there will be false teachers among you, among us. Ano po? Who will secretly bring in destructive here are uh, heresies, even denying the masters who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And if they agree, they will exploit you with false words. They will uh, their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not as deep. If we are receiving the word of God, especially those who have the, the, the gift of uh, prophecy, release it the way God wants it to be released. Do not release the word of God for us to gain a lot of members. Do not release the word of God because we want to please others. Do not release the word of God with 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 the with with our self uh, selfish ambition, do not release the word of God simply because we want a a tap on our shoulder saying good job, you release it well, good job. That's what I need for today. Good job. That's what I that, that's what I came for. Amen. Regardless whether someone will stay or someone will come back next week or not, release the word of God. I remember when I was uh, still single. I don't even know if they will, uh, someone will attend next week in releasing the word of God. But now I'm more confident and I'm not. You, you know, I never been scared of releasing the word of God. If no one will attend next week, fine. Dominic is with me. As well as my, my family. I have now three, uh, ano tawag dito? Three audiences. Even all of you will not come back next week because of the word that I will release today, fine. Because I still have my little daughter with me next week. But come to think of it, we are releasing the word not because, not because I want to please Kaysen. I am releasing the word not because I want to please Jones. I'm releasing the word simply because I want to hurt Maris. 
I I am I am not releasing the word simply because I I I want to to play jokes with the uh, Ted. Amali pala. <laughs> ano ano ano? Wrong. That's why I'm not assisted. Anyway, I am releasing the word of God for us to embrace what God wants us to do in our life and what God wants me to do in my life. The first person here that is being struck by the word of God is the one who is speaking. If you feel hurt and offended by the word of God, relax. Nauna na ako. I have been offended many times. I have been hurt many times by the word of God. And I have been uh, corrected by the word of God many times before you. Because I am the one preaching the word of God. One day and someday it will come that all of us here will be given our own church and you will stand to release the word of God. Praise be to God. Then that is the time that I will just sit and wait for the word of God. Uh, to, to, to offend or to, or to cut between my soul and spirit. But I am glad that before I receive it, it came to you first. Amen. And if you are teaching the word of God and their greed, they will exploit you and false words. Their condemnation for long ago is not idle or their destruction is not asleep. You will be judged by that as well. Why? Because we are misrepresenting not only his word, but we are misrepresenting him. Amen. Or amen. 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 So, you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. So if you have played well, if you have uh, if you have played well and seen well for the worship, if you have uh, uh, exhorted well for the giving, if you have shared the word of God to our brethren, and if you have advised them according to the will and according to the word of God, at the end of the day, all glory belongs to him. Amen. We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. And let me remind you that working for the Lord is a privilege given to us. Not all has been called to do his work or to be partnered with him in expanding his kingdom. So at the end of the day, all glory belongs to him. It's not that when you sing well, good job, said Dino. We got it perfect, so except of course, I'm smart. <laughs> So you still when you get the low grades. Amen. Amen. All glory belongs to God. When we have achieved something in life, you have achieved it not because we're smart, not because we're intelligent enough, because God allows us to achieve it. All glory belongs to God. We have gained something in life. We have bought properties, cars, money. All glory belongs to God. Because God is allowing us to have those particular materials for us to glorify His name. That's why instead of, I'm not saying don't say thank you for your boss. And I'm not saying uh, um, that, the, that the people around you is not helping you as well. But what I'm saying is that God is just allowing us to have what we have, to spend what we have, to use what we have for his glory alone. Amen. Praise God. Now, on James 3, verse 2 to 3 says, For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he say, 
He is perfectly or he is a perfect man. Salam kalala kung ganyan. Sabihin mo mga. Able also to ano yung pronunciation niyan? Ha? Plus five. Sa breeder tayo, man, magkasundin tayo lahat. Ano? Also to breathe in his whole body. If we put bits into the mouth of a horse so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Yung aliba. Bits. On how we're going to control the horse. See how powerful the bits, the, the bits is. You are able to control a big, a huge animal because of the bits. Same is true with our mouth. But if you knew someone, I have said a lot of words that offended a lot of people. I have released also a lot of words that have hurt and caused someone to stumble. Amen. I wish I could take it back, but I cannot. So instead of killing yourself, why you have said a particular word to someone that hurt them, just ask for forgiveness. Because what has been released from our mouth is already has been released. We cannot take it back. That's why be careful. Be very careful in releasing words when you are, or don't release words when you are angry. Don't release words when you are happy. Don't say yes to those someone because of your emotions. Amen. But really, if you knew someone who never ever offended someone by his word, and I believe there is none, and the book, and if you have released something that hurt someone, if you knew, if you still knew the name, if you still have the contact number, if you were still friend in Facebook, say sorry. Well, if someone has offended us, ano naman? Ganyan naman na lang, ganyan lang naman na buhay. If someone has offended us, if someone has hurt us by their words, ano po? Then we, we must forgive them as well. If someone told you that you're ugly, but you are not, send them your picture with a smile. <laughs> If, you, if someone told you that you are beautiful, then again smile and say thank you. All glory to God. Amen. You are fearfully and Anyway, if we put bits, I mean, you know, brothers and sisters, people are just like that. But uh, we, 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 we knew that it is better to be hurt physically than to verbally abuse Because what you have released, but what you have released to someone might cause destruction. Our world might build. And, uh, uh, in our world can either be a make or break someone. Oh, you're so beautiful. Make. Huh? You're so ugly. Break. <laughs> yeah, really. But what you have released and it might take a lot of years to be healed. Unlike physical abuse, if you have been if you have been battered or beaten physically, two three weeks, one month, the scars will be done. But if you have verbally abused someone, if you have verbally 
hurt someone. And if you can ask forgiveness, ask forgiveness. Amen? What else? Look at the sheep also. Sheep back. No. Look at the sheep also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are they are, they are guided by a very small rubber, a rudder, wherever the wind of the pilot directs. Small rudder. Ano yung rudder? Ano yung nasa likod? Tapos na gano'n? Timon. 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 Timon ba? Timon. Masa yun na gano'n sa likod that control the ships whether they want to turn right or left. Amen. So also as Tan is a small member yet it's most of great things. How great a forest is set a place by such a small fire. How great a forest and the tongue is and the tongue is a fire, a word of righteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by God. Look at the thing of it. <laughs> and that is true as well. The, the, our boy can kill someone. Our small, the small muscle, a part of our body, can even destroy our personality. If we are a big ship or a huge ship can be controlled by rather small man. Your life can be controlled or can be directed by the way you speak, by the way you are releasing your words to others. The Lord, the word of the Lord says. It doesn't matter what we are speaking. It doesn't matter what we are putting inside our body. What matters is that what we are releasing. Because once you release it, you cannot take it back. Amen. I have released words as well. You know, the only person I believe, correct me if I am wrong, that who knew us, who, who, who know the big part of us, because even our family don't even uh, don't know us fully. Only God knows who we are. Amen. But when when we are inside our home, when 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 we are with our family, that is who we really are. My ways of uh, treating Jones is different than the way I am treating my wife. The way I speak in the pulpit is different than the way I speak inside my house. It's much louder there than here. The tone is much different there than here. It's a different thing. My temper is much higher here than there. But their temper, <laughs> there, is higher than here. Oh, glory to God. I mean, we're different inside our houses. We're different when we are around our family members. In my house, dito tahimik pa ko, in my place, if I speak, I shout. Actually, I'm speaking right now. <laughs> Don't think that I'm shouting. I am just talking. Wait till I shout. Come to think of it. Whether your voice is loud or low, whether you can hit the high tone or the lower tone, what important is what is coming out of your mouth? If I am shouting, 
I love you. Or if I am shouting curses, which one is better? If I am talking or releasing word in low tone with curses and shouting I love you in a high tone, which one is better? So it doesn't matter what level of tones you are into. What important is the words that are coming out on our mouth? Because it is very, and we should be very careful about it because it might destroy the whole family. Especially when we are angry. Praise be to God. Luke 16, verse 24 says, And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Come to think of it. Staining, last part, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. Your tongue can set fire on hell. Very interesting. See, come to them. You know Lazarus, the poor guy and the rich man. Lazarus is always begging for something on the rich guy, whatever will fall or will fall uh, on his table, he will pick it up for uh, his food. And he called out for the ring ram. You know what had happened here? There's a division. Okay? Lazarus is wet with Father Abraham, and the rich man went to hell. It doesn't mean that you are rich, you're going to hell. It's not that you, if when you are rich, you're going to hell. It's because of his character and attitude and by his faith alone. And he called, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and pull my tongue. For I am in anguish in this place. So be very careful in using our tongue. We're only good in using our tongue when, when we are tasty food. <laughs> but in real life, we must be very careful. Because you yourself, is, you can even destroy yourself. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile, of, of, of reptile and sea creature can be formed, can be tamed, sorry, and has been tamed, not tamed, then, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Ito, All of us are given the strength and power to tame beasts. That's what the, the example earlier was the was the horse. If we're going to put a, a bit on it, we can control the horses or the horse. The dog, diba? kung, kung may tali yan, if we, if we put lace on it, we can control it. Well, actually, most of the animals, but we cannot tame our own. <laughs> but no human being can tame, no human being can tame the tongue. No one can really control his tongue, his or her tongue. Praise be to God that we cannot control it and we need our Lord Jesus Christ to control it for us. Lift it up all to God. Surrender it, surrender it to Him that Lord, I cannot tame my own tongue. Tame it for me. Mama Rites. <laughs> It is restless. Our tongue is restless and full of deadly poison. So every day of our lives, ask God to tame 
our time. Amen. Don't be angry. Actually, this is a lesson learned. Don't hate someone who cannot control their time. Matami lang buwan ka lang talaga eh. Why? Because no one can really tell his own time. You don't be angry at them. Just pray for them. If they are keep on cursing us, fine. I understand. <laughs> We understood. Amen. Now, with his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor. But by the knowledge, the righteous are delivered. Proverbs. With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by the knowledge, the righteous are delivered. What else? When words are many, and Transgression is not lacking. But whenever the strain is lips is prudent. Parang sa meeting. Have you ever attended the meeting? That is better not to speak than, than, to, than to speak up your idea. Even in the classroom, it's better to pretend that you know something without speaking. That keep on telling things. Kasi yung tayo na yun. That we come, that we are keep on telling things which is not relevant. Amen. When words are many, one of few words, transgression is not lucky. But wherever he's trained, he sleeps. What else? 9 to 12. When it, we bless our Lord and Father, And with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers, these things are ought not to be so. Thus a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water. Can a fig tree My brothers, bear, a lot, uh, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs. Neither can salt pond yield fresh waters. What is the word of God that, 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 that trying to reach us? That if you are, if we are keep on saying, or if we are saying, praise be to God, or glory to God, huh? then the same mouth, Is this that we are the, the same mouth that we are using in praising the word uh, in praising our God in worshiping our God is the same mouth that we are using to curse someone? Then there's something wrong with us, amen. If you are going to use your mouth to praise God, then don't use it in cursing. When you are using it in worshiping the word of God, our, 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 our God, then don't curse. Balik naman. Diba? Look at me. If, if, if I am releasing the word of God here, and after this, when I'm telling story to someone, it's always with the curse. It's always with the P.I. It's always with the Pwede ko magmoral ito? Pwede ako lang ito. May dadali lang. Anyway, if we, if we are going to use our mark in, in worship and praising that please don't use it first. So, because you are speaking blessing, don't speak or don't release distraction for others. Amen. God loves you. Then, all of a sudden, we need to No, this is too big. Amen? Yes. Huh. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. I tell you, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people 
will give account na kalista. People will give ay people will give account for every careless word they speak. Be careful. Now, who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. What is meekness? Controlled strength. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Controlled power, controlled strength. Okay, patol ng patol. Now, but if you have a bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, oh, in your hearts, in your hearts, uh -huh. if you have bitter jealousy, or okay, makalala, or natin yan, dito na natin yan, sa harap natin yan, para hindi alam pa kayo pinag-usapan natin dito. Okay, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but it is earthly and spiritual and uh, demonic or where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there will be disorder and every by practice. English, iba paliwanan ko sa Naiintindihan niyo 'yan? Amen. Those who said amen, ask them later. Can't you think of it? Who is wise and understanding among you? James is referring to our brothers and sisters. Balikan natin. Who is wise and understanding among you? Kino ang matalino? Kino ang magaling? Among us. By his good conduct, let him show his word in the meekness of wisdom. James is referring to earthly wisdom. It seems that it's just like you are releasing advices to someone without referring it to the word of God. Amen. Because it will produce not a righteous in, in not in a righteous way, not in a godly way, and uh, godly way, but in a worldly way, the results will be worldly. Why? Because the wisdom that we have received is from the word, from the world itself. So if it is from the world, there is no um, godly or righteous results that will come out. Yes, it's your right to get angry at him. Yes, it's your right to have something. Yes, it is your right. It is your right. What right? Yes, you have the right to be happy. You deserve to be happy. God. We're all happy even before. We haven't... Uh, but if you have a bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast. And be false to the truth. Always mirror everything in the word of God. Amen. And let me close with this. Plus the name. But the wisdom from above. Oh, differentiate the worldly wisdom from the wisdom above. But the but the wisdom from above is first pure. Then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And the harvest of righteousness is shown in peace by those who make peace. Peace. yung pag ang wisdom galing kang about. It is pure. Pure not in a sense that you are pure when getting married, but pure in a sense that pure in heart. Peaceable. 
Not a false peace. But sige na, para magkabati na lang tayo. Hindi nga, it should be peace. Hindi Gentle. Huh? Open to reasons. We accept the reasoning of others. So, no, 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 no. Full of mercy and good goodness. Impartial and sincere. Ganda. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. You want to sow peace? Actually, you want to read peace pala. There's no peace. Gusto mo ng kapayapaan, magtanong ka ng kapayapaan. Alam ka naman gusto mo ng kapayapaan, wala ka naman ginawa kung di mga kawal. Friends kami yan. Now, sabi mo dalawa pa. Ang meron pa? Okay, praise be to God. Let me close with this. Brothers and sisters, as what James is teaching us on the third chapter, to control the words that we are going to release. We cannot tame our tongue, but we can lift it up and surrender it to God. Those people who have offended you by their words, those people who have hurt you by their words, forgive them. And if you have hurt someone, if you have caused pain to someone because of your words you have released, ask for forgiveness. Release your heart from hatred. After all, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. That's all stand. Father, we thank you for the peace that is in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that if we fail to tame our tongue, you are the one who is controlling it. We thank you, Father, for the pure and wisdom from above. We thank you, Lord, for the righteousness that you have given us. Lord, at, at the end of the day, after all the activities, after all the, the singing, after all the, the, the releasing of word and exhortation, after sharing your words or the gospel outside of this place, all glory belongs to you alone. Father, we thank you for those people who are here today. We thank you, Father, for opening our hearts. We thank you, Father, for the seed that you have implanted in our hearts. May the word that we have received today serves or be a guidance on how we are going to live our life. Lord, teach us to forgive more. Those, or if we have hurt someone using our word, the things that we have released, Father, help us to ask forgiveness. Father, help us to release forgiveness to others as well. Father, you are our God. You are our Lord. And at the end of the day, we all know, Lord, in our heart that you own us. Father, this is the day that you have made. This is the day that we're going to rejoice for the heart that you have given us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's raise our hands. May God's word from Ephesians 3, verse 17 to 21 manifest and be discerned in our hearts. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power and work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.